Hey guys, Jake with 8020 Media here. Today we're gonna to be doing a video discussing the causes of your vehicle losing power while accelerating. This is a little bit more generic of a problem, but we're gonna go ahead and talk about why this happens, what the potential causes are, and some of the troubleshooting steps that you can take to fix the problem if you are noticing sluggish acceleration or any form of loss of power while you're putting your foot down on the gas. So to understand what possibly could cause this problem, it's helpful to understand what happens when you actually push your foot down on the gas. So when you push your foot down on the gas, what happens is it opens the throttle and to create that additional power, you need more air and you need more fuel. And then there are two byproducts of that. With more air and more fuel, you then have more combustion taking place within the engine. And then you also have more exhaust gases that then need to flow out of the engine. When we break this down into four components, the first piece is one, more air is being drawn into the engine. The second piece is more fuel is being sent into the combustion chamber. Three, more combustion is taking place and four more exhaust gases now need to exit the vehicle. When we break it down into these four different categories, it gives us an easier way to look at, okay, what could potentially cause a problem with each one of these four things that is going on when we put our foot down on the gas pedal to create more power and to accelerate more quickly. So jumping into the first component here, and that's drawing more air into the engine, there's really two possible things that could cause sluggish acceleration. The first one is the air filter. The air filter prevents debris, dirt, leaves, and other types of harmful particles from getting into your engine. And so naturally over time, the air filter can get very clogged. And what that does is restrict the amount of air that's going into the engine. Typically when this happens, if your air filter isn't that clogged, you might not notice a whole lot. However, if it does get heavily clogged, you can actually end up getting a P0172 engine code, which is for the engine running rich, which essentially means that the engine is getting too much gasoline relative to the amount of air that it's getting. Fortunately, cleaning the air filter is pretty easy to do. Accessing it and getting it out on most vehicles is extremely easy. And so this is a great first thing to check is pull the air filter, clean it and see if that improves any of the problems that you're having. The second thing is with the mass airflow sensor. The mass airflow sensor measures how much air is being sent into the engine and then uses those readings to control how much fuel then gets sent into the engine so that you have optimal air to fuel ratios. MAF sensors are typically located pretty openly on the intake system right in the engine bay and so they pretty frequently get dirty and gunked up which can cause them to throw bad readings. And when they throw bad readings, it will throw off your air to fuel ratios, which can cause issues with acceleration, idling, misfires. Fortunately, this is another problem that you can solve pretty easily. It's as simple as getting some mass airflow cleaner, which I actually have right here because we were doing this on a vehicle the other day. Pull the mass airflow sensor off and spray it with some of this. Put it back on and see if that fixes the problem. So that covers it for the intake side of things. It's really the air filter, the MAF sensor. There are a few other things that can take place like vacuum leaks here and there, but these are the two places where I would start looking to fix this problem. So moving on to the second component that's fueling. There are typically three things here that can cause this. The first one being the fuel filter which is similar to the air filter. However, it prevents any dirt or harmful particles that are within your gas tank from being sucked into the engine. And then you have your fuel pump, which is responsible for pulling the fuel from the gas tank and actually sending it to the engine. And then the third one is with the injectors. And now injectors is mostly a problem on direct injected vehicles. Vehicles with port injection don't necessarily have this problem. As I mentioned with the fuel filter, that can get clogged up just from catching a lot of debris and dirt within your gas tank, and then it can inhibit fuel flow to the engine. 
and that would cause issues with acceleration because when you put your foot to the floor, the engine isn't able to get enough gas to create that additional power. The second possible problem here is with the fuel pump. Fuel pumps typically operate at pretty high pressures. High pressure fuel pumps, for example, sometimes operate upwards of 30,000 PSI of pressure and typically they'll weaken over time. And so you might have a 30,000 PSI high pressure fuel pump, but after 10 years of use, it's only operating at 20,000 PSI because it's slowly wearing and deteriorating over time. Fuel pumps can just fail immediately, but typically they start to slowly fail over time. And one of the ways to notice this is when you are having issues accelerating because a pump that can't flow enough, if you put your foot to the floor, can't supply enough gasoline to the engine to be able to create that much power. Lastly, with injectors on direct injected vehicles, injectors can get clogged up, injectors can also leak, which will cause issues with misfires, which can cause problems with acceleration as well. Typically, when you have an injector issue, you're probably gonna get P0300 engine codes for cylinder misfires. That can happen from a lot of the other things on this list as well, so it's not exclusive to that, but that is one code that you'll likely get. And now just a general point, when we're talking about fueling related things, you typically get the inverse engine code as with the air side. So you'll get a P0171 engine code, which is for your engine running lean, which means that it's not getting enough fuel relative to the amount of air that it has within the engine. The third piece of the puzzle is combustion. Combustion requires air, fuel, and spark. And so when I talk about combustion-related problems, I'm mostly talking about ignition-related components, which are spark plugs, ignition coils, ignition wires, and for some older vehicles, things like distributors. When you have issues with any ignition-related component, you typically will get P0300 engine codes for cylinder misfires. Typically, when you do have cylinder misfires, your spark plugs and your wires or ignition coils are the first thing to check. Usually, if you don't have any issues with misfires or you don't have any slow starting issues, I'd probably start by looking at everything else on this list, just since you typically are going to get an engine code with this and you're gonna get a few other symptoms they're gonna make it a little bit more noticeable that it's an ignition related problem. And now the last piece of the puzzle of creating more power is exhaust flow. As we bring more air into the engine, we create more combustion, we now have more air that needs to leave the engine. So there are a couple things on the exhaust side that can cause acceleration problems. The first one being a clogged catalytic converter. Catalytic converters essentially have mesh screens inside of them that are made out of rare earth metals. And what can happen sometimes is fuel can get into the exhaust system and then that fuel ignites within the exhaust and it can actually melt the inside of the catalytic converter and it can cause the catalytic converter to clog or all of the little holes on the mesh screen essentially plug up and create a lot of back pressure within your exhaust system. And when this happens, when you have a lot of back pressure, you have exhaust gases that end up getting pushed back into the combustion chamber, which can cause a lot of problems with idling, misfires, acceleration, etc. A clogged catalytic converter will typically throw some engine codes. Additionally, you'll also usually smell a bad smell um, within you know, the inside of your car because a lot of those exhaust gases end up sitting there, accumulate up and into the vehicle. And so a bad catalytic converter is usually one of the more common problems that causes a lack of acceleration on the exhaust side of things. The second thing is the O2 sensors. So the O2 sensors measure how much unburnt oxygen is within the exhaust gas and it uses this to determine proper air to fuel ratios. So issues with O2 sensors can throw off air to fuel ratios, which can lead to all of the problems that we've been talking about, about AFRs like misfires, rough idling, hesitation when you hit the gas pedal, lack of acceleration, jerky driving, etc. These are a little bit easier to pinpoint because you'll get a check engine light that will point you directly to the O2 sensors. So that wraps up our most common causes of sluggish acceleration or a loss of power while accelerating. With that being said, 
There are a number of other problems that can cause this. One, for example, that you see talked about on a lot of articles online is a loss of cylinder compression. There are a number of other things that can cause it too. Crankshaft position sensor, a number of other sensors, electrical systems, um, as well as engine components that can cause these problems. Ultimately, there are a lot of things that can cause this. Our list is probably the most common ones. And realistically, I'd start with the basics like your mass airflow sensor, your air filter, and then look into fueling. You can have issues with spark plugs, ignition coils, and so on, but those are usually a little bit easier to diagnose. So if you're having a hard time diagnosing it because you're not getting any check engine lights or any engine codes, I'd look into air filter, fuel filter, mass airflow sensors, and some of those other smaller things that I mentioned that aren't necessarily gonna throw an engine code with it. With that being said, the question is, okay, I have this problem, where should I start? Because there's so many problems that can cause this, it's really hard to pinpoint it without additional information or additional symptoms that you can go off of. My recommendation for troubleshooting it is one, go and get a code reader because that will pull up any codes that are stored within your engine's computer and it can most of the time point you in the right direction of what might be causing this problem. Just because a lot of these various systems have different sensors and readings that will throw engine codes when something is off. So that's step one, code read. If you code read and there are zero codes, then I'd recommend starting and going down my list and starting with the easiest things to potentially solve. So clean your air filter, clean your mass airflow sensor, check your spark plugs, check your ignition coils, and then if those still aren't solving the problem, you'll have to get a little bit more advanced in terms of your diagnostic techniques, or you might have to take it to a mechanic. There are ways to check your fuel pump to know if your fuel pump's good. There are ways to check your fuel injectors. There are ways to check if you have a clogged catalytic converter. However, doing these isn't as simple as plugging something into your vehicle. Testing a fuel pump and testing fuel flow is a little bit more advanced and difficult. If you feel comfortable, you can try some of those diagnostic techniques to see if you have problems with some of those more difficult to check systems and components. But if not, I'd recommend taking it to a shop and they can usually pinpoint the problem pretty easily just by driving it around. Another thing is to be very cautious of any other symptoms that you might have. Just saying my engine's losing power when I accelerate really doesn't help someone diagnose the problem very easily just because there are so many things that can cause it. But if you're able to provide additional symptoms and additional problems that happen when you press the accelerator down, it makes it a little bit easier to pinpoint what the specific problem is, or at least whether it's a ignition problem you should be looking at or a fueling problem or exhaust, etc. That wraps up our video today. Hope you guys appreciated this content. If you are having issues with acceleration on your vehicle, I hope this helped. Feel free to throw any comments you have in the description and I'll do my best to answer and help you diagnose as well. So if you guys like this video, please subscribe to the channel, hit that like button and stay tuned for future videos.